internet, so today I'm going to be doing my favorite books of 2016 list. These books are not in any specific order, I didn't number them off from least favorite to favorite or anything. Um, I just decided to go through my Goodreads list of what I read last year and pull the books down that really just made my favorites list, either because I just thought they were phenomenal books or I really just loved the reading experience or for whatever reason. Um, but I do have a couple of books that were probably my favorite of the favorites, and so when I get to those, I will say that. But I'm just going to go in the order that I read them. So the first book on my favorites list for 2016 is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. Now this was the very first book that I read in 2016, so this was before I started book two, and I loved this book. It basically is about a set of twins, Noah and Jude, and it's a very sad story, but you get to hear both sides. It's told from both points of view, but from different points in time as well. So Noah's perspective is from when he's 13, and it's kind of before the terrible event happens and kind of as it happens. And then Jude's perspective is for when she is 16, so after it's happened, and you get to see her point of view from that time frame. There is... LGBTQ plus elements in this book and I thought it was done really well and I just really really loved this book. I highly highly recommend it if you have not read it already and I of course gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It was a great first book to read in 2016. The next book on this list is Yes Please by Amy Poehler. This is one of the first books I read in 2016. I think it was the third or fourth book that I read and I freaking loved it. This was actually my first time ever reading a celebrity memoir and it was fantastic. Amy Poehler is one of my favorite people. I mean, she's just hilarious. I love pretty much everything that she's in. I love all of her stuff from SNL back in the day and her humor just shines in this book. There are a lot of great pictures in it and I've heard that the audiobook is even better. At one point in the future, I think I would like to reread this with the audiobook because I hear that she puts a lot of extra commentary in the audiobook which I'm sure is fantastic but if you like Amy Poehler or you like reading celebrity memoirs or anything like that I highly recommend this I loved it and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars something I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video is as far as series goes I did not pick more than one book from a series because I read a lot of really fantastic series this year but I didn't want all the books from a certain series to dominate the list or anything like that. So I only picked one book per series, like my favorite book of that series, basically. I hope that makes sense. The reason I'm mentioning that is because this next book is the first book that was part of a series, and this is one of my favorite books of the year. Like This is one of the top two favorite books of the year. That book is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass. I discovered the Throne of Glass series thanks to booktube this year. Completely, totally got obsessed with it. I know, and I know, before you go down in the comments and say something, I do recognize that there are a lot of problematic things about this series, and I would love to discuss that. I really would. I'm hoping some of those problematic things are something Sarah will go back and fix in her last book. Fingers crossed, or at least I hope that she speaks out about those things. But with that being said, you are still allowed to love problematic things, and I love the Throne of Glass series, and this is my all-time favorite book from that series. It's one of my favorite books of the year. Like I said, it's one of the my top two favorite books of this year. Probably one of my favorite books of all time. I loved this book. The Throne of Glass series is a high fantasy series. Um, it starts off kind of more young adult, but the further you get into the series, probably starting around this book, it becomes more of a new adult kind of series, so I wouldn't read it if you're under the age of like 16. I really, really love this series. It completely blew me away and I'm total throw of glass trash now. I think I've rambled on about this book long enough, but obviously I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. And also, look at this cover. Mm. The next book on this list is The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan, and this is the last book in the Percy Jackson series. The Percy Jackson series was a series that I've been meaning to read for years and I never got around to it and I read the entire series in like nine days over the summer. There are five books in the series, they're really quick reads, 
it's a middle grade series, but it's so enjoyable for uh, older people as well. Very similar into the way that Harry Potter is also very enjoyable for adults, even though it is more of a middle grade young adult series. It basically has to do with Greek mythology and Percy Jackson finds out that he is a half-blood which means that his father is one of the Greek gods and there are a lot of kids that are also half-bloods and he goes on awesome adventures and I loved these books so much. I think the last book was my favorite though. It was really hard to pick between the first book and the last book because they were both so good but I think that the last book is probably my favorite one of the series. I'm really looking forward to reading more of Rick Riordan's series now that I've read the Percy Jackson series. And if you haven't given this series a try and you have been thinking about it, I highly recommend giving it a go. Like I said, it's enjoyable even if you are not of the age group that it's meant for. It's still super enjoyable. Rick Riordan's writing is very humorous and he's just a really good storyteller. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. The next book on this list is actually more of an essay that was based off of a speech, and that is We Should All Be Feminist by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Now this book I only rated four and a half out of five stars, but it's such an important thing to read, and I enjoyed reading it so much that it made my favorites list anyway. I feel like this book is just such a good way to really learn what feminism really means instead of what the media has construed it out to be and what so many people feel like it is because of those reasons and it's so super super short it's based off of a speech she did for a TED talk I believe but it was just so refreshing to read and I feel like it's so important to read that I just had to put it on the list anyway. I highly recommend reading through this little thing if you haven't yet. And like I already mentioned, I gave it four and a half out of five stars, but I absolutely loved it. The next book on my list is The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, And this is a new Morgan Matson book that came out this year. It's a contemporary, it's pretty thick for a contemporary, but I really, really loved the story. It's about a girl named Andy who is the daughter of a politician. She's got her whole summer planned out and pretty much her whole life planned out and then everything just goes in disarray and she's got to figure out what she's going to do for the summer. The only job that she can find is being a dog walker and of course there's a little romance that happens as with most contemporaries. I really loved the friendship dynamic in the story and how it wasn't all just about the romance. There's also a really great family dynamic in the story which I really appreciated. Really the only thing I did not like about this book was that it's very white but other than that I really really loved this story. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. If you were a fan of contemporaries I think you would really enjoy this one and plus the cover is adorable. I've talked about that before but I just really love the cover so I'm going to show it off again. The next book on this list is actually my favorite book that I read this year and that book is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This is definitely one of my favorite books of all time. It's won a lot of awards and it's about a boy named Connor whose mom has cancer and he starts having dreams about this monster. It's kind of hard to explain the plot without getting too spoilery because it is a very short book but it's very sad, it's very touching and heartwarming and I just loved this story so much. Like I said, this was definitely my favorite book of the year. It's one of my favorite books of all time, one that I want to reread over and over again. And this edition also has beautiful illustrations done by Jim Kay, who also does the illustrations for the illustrated Harry Potter books that are currently coming out. Obviously, I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it, and I cannot recommend this book enough. We're getting down to the final three. The next book on this list is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I think this is the only other book on this list that did not quite get a 5 star rating for me, but it did get a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And the main reason that I took off half a star is because I read this before I read the uh, Grisha trilogy, and it was kind of confusing trying to jump into this world right off the bat without reading the Grisha trilogy, so it took me a while to figure out exactly what was going on, but once I did, I freaking loved it. So I wanted to put it on this list anyway because I still really, really loved the reading experience and the story and I thought it was just so awesome. It's a young adult fantasy book about a heist and it has six main characters. You get the perspective of, I believe, five of them. It's also a very diverse book. They're trying to pull off this really crazy, impossible heist and it's just really intense and I 
have not read the sequel yet and I really really want to. Like I said I gave this four and a half out of five stars just because it took me a little while to figure out exactly what was going on in the world but freaking loved this book and look how cool it looks. The next book on this list is again another book from a series that I read a majority of this year. That is Winter by Marissa Meyer, which is the fourth and final book in the Lunar Chronicles. The Lunar Chronicles are sci-fi retellings of fairy tales, and it's a series that I really enjoyed, but this book definitely takes the cake as being the best book in the series for sure. It's also probably the longest book I've read this year. It was 820 pages, even though it doesn't look like it. The paper is super thin, but it was just such a fantastic finale to the series, and was so well done and I loved it and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Also another thing that I really love about this series is again, it's a pretty diverse cast of characters. If you haven't read this series yet, some people do say it kind of takes them a while to get into it, but I guarantee you it's totally worth it. And the last book on this list is actually the very last book that I read this year and that is Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. I read this book the last three days of the year and actually finished it I think 18 minutes into the new year, but I'm still counting it as finishing it in 2016 because some parts of the world it still was 2016 and it was 18 minutes. So I'm counting it. But Anna Kendrick is hilarious and her humor shines so well in this book. It's really thin, so it wasn't too much. And I just really love reading the different stories that she has decided to include in this and also really enjoyed learning a little bit more about her because she's somebody that I really like but I really didn't know a whole lot about her and now I feel like I know her a lot more and I like her even more as a person now. Gave this 5 out of 5 stars. Again, if you like celebrity memoirs, highly recommend this one. These were my favorite books that I read in 2016. A lot of people were making their favorite book videos of 2016 before 2016 was over. But I was afraid to do that and I'm glad that I didn't because it just so happened that the last book I read of the year made the list. So I'm glad that I waited. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite books of 2016 were and also if you liked any of the books that I mentioned on my list. That'll be it for this video and I'll see you guys next time with another video.